Many of the protocols online organize communication between computers that are participating in the protocol along the lines of the client-server model. So there's a server that's available all the time, and there are clients that connect to the server to retrieve information. So a classic example of this is the web. Um, there's some web server somewhere. Maybe this is uh, www.buffalo.edu. And my computer connects to this server, retrieves the home page, and that's, that's how it works. Um, so this is a very, very common way that protocols are structured. However, there is an alternate model for structuring protocols online. And it's referred, these protocols are referred to as peer-to-peer -peer protocols. And peer-to-peer -peer protocols are important because they're trying to correct certain issues with um, the client-server model. In particular, when you have a client-server uh, uh, type of interaction, remember the server has to be online all the time. If I'm trying to browse to www.buffalo.edu and that server is down, then I can't retrieve the information. There's no else to get that information. So the um, availability of this particular website is entirely determined by whether or not this server is available. Now, let's think about how you might distribute. Now, normally for web pages, if the server is down, it's because you know maybe somebody screwed up and tripped over a cable or whatever, uh, or it's down for maintenance or something like that. But let's say you're trying to distribute something online that is somewhat controversial. Let's say, for example, you're trying to make it possible for people to download music files that they shouldn't have access to. In that case, setting up a centralized server is a problem. The reason it's a problem is because, let's say that I'm trying to distribute MP3s online, and I set up a server and I put a bunch of MP3s up there and I say, they're free, music should be free, everybody should go and download my MP3s and music should be free, right? Music shouldn't be free, we should pay artists, uh, but, uh, but let's say that's your, that's your model. So you put up your server, you put all your content there and you tell everyone to come and get it. So what's gonna happen? The first thing that's going to happen is about 10 minutes later, the uh, Recording Industry of America is going to notice this, and they're going to talk to whoever is providing a connection to your server, and they're going to say, by the way, that server has all sorts of copyrighted content on it, and that's not something that uh, it is legal to distribute, and so what's going to happen is someone's going to come, get the server, and take it offline. Once that server is offline, any of the clients that were trying, all these people out there that are desperate to download my MP3s, won't be able to to access that content. And so the client server model, while it's great for lots of legitimate types of internet services, causes problems in certain cases uh, when I'm trying to distribute content that may not be completely above board. It also means that you know, in the case where the server is down for some reason, the clients are completely stranded. And so for example, maybe there's some disaster that I'm trying to uh, prepare for and I wanna make sure that the infrastructure can survive the loss of the server. So what a peer-to-peer -peer protocol does is rather than having a centralized server, it distributes information over all the peers um, that are participating in the protocol. And so in a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, the distinction that we usually draw between a client and a server is gone. There's just peers. So every rather than having the server that has to be available all the time, I have a group of clients. And for most peer-to-peer -peer protocols, as long as enough of those clients are online, the protocol or the system will work. So if instead of putting all of my music content on a centralized server, I distribute those music files over a bunch of machines, then it becomes a lot more difficult for somebody to make the content unavailable because rather than having to come after one server, they have to come after all of these clients um, or some large subset of them. Um, same thing, for example, if I was doing this in a disaster uh, scenario, if one or two of these clients become disconnected from the network or they lose power or something like that, as long as enough of the rest of the clients are available and can communicate with each other, then the, the uh, system could continue to run. Now, most peer-to-peer -peer protocols, you may wonder, well, how do the clients in a peer-to-peer -peer protocol find each other? And the answer is, you know, most peer-to-peer -peer protocols have a little bit of centralized infrastructure to them. So they might have a directory that I have to connect to to find out where the other peers are in the network. Once I complete that step, however, I can communicate with those peers directly, and I can avoid the reliance on the centralized infrastructure that can cause problems with the client server model.